wouldn't it be cool if you could do, you know, a 70.3 in every county of Ireland? There's 32 counties in Ireland. Uh, and I was like, don't be, don't be nuts. I wouldn't change anything that happened or that happened to me for anything because it's made me the person who I am today. But is there periods of time where I look back and go, I wish I didn't behave that way towards other people or treat myself with so little regard? Yes, I am gunning for a massive challenge, attempting to run 6,000 kilometers in hopefully 60 days. My biggest strength and my biggest weakness is the fact that I reckon I can do anything <laughs> without having any uh, any information to back it up. I'm Michael Burton. I am a part-time endurance athlete. Um, my probably greatest achievement, achievement to date is doing 32 Ironmans, 70.3 Ironmans in 32 days. Um, and I did that in 2022. Um, but probably four years ago, I couldn't run 4K um, or 5K or 2K without having to stop and walk. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about me and, and what I do. But... I think let's start with that four years previous to that. Like, let's go back. I can't run 5K, I can't run 4K, I can't run 2K, as you just said. Like, where were you at that point in your life? And what led you to then kind of turn it around and get to a point where you're doing something pretty insane? Um, so at that stage, actually, it was uh, the beginning of COVID. Um, I was living in London. I worked a sales job for a fintech company. I smoked you know, probably a box of smokes a day. I drank four or five times a week. Um, and along with the drinking went all the extracurricular activities that went up my nose um, on a weekly basis. And yeah, I was nominated to run a 5K uh, like a lot of us were during COVID. And I went out and I tried to run 5K around Hackney Marshes and I died a miserable death. Um, because as anyone who comes from any sort of sporting background does, they have a massive ego and I tried to run out and sprint it and then turns out I got about 800 meters and I was dead. And yeah, I was living in a house with a, a couple of my pals and we, there was literally nothing else to do. There was no pubs open. There was no whatever. I was working from home all the time and we just started running. We just started going out for runs together <clears throat> Um, some of us then started running a bit more so we weren't running as frequently and I started eating better because I was in control of what I was eating because I was at home the whole time and I could make really conscious decisions around when I was going to eat and what I was going to eat and I went from about 125 kilos to 110 in a matter of a couple of months and I just caught the bug for running um, um, and it's worth mentioning as a kid I was always a runner so uh, it just wasn't kind of those longer distance runs. It was all kind of sprinting up to like 400, 800 meter run, running. Um, and I just caught that bug again, fell in love with it again. Um, I moved back home to help my mum out. Um, home is Ireland in the Wicklow Mountains. And I was in nature. Um, and that just gave me the space and the capacity to be outdoors and go for runs with my dog and... Um, be up in the mountains and the fresh air away from London. Um, I didn't have a car, so I cycled everywhere. Uh, we don't live very far from the sea, probably about, about 15, 20 minutes. So I started sea swimming and it just snowballed. I said, I'd, I remember when I was like 18, 19, I said that I wanted to do an Ironman and all my friends laughed at me and rightfully so they should have because I, there was no way that I was uh, capable of doing something like that back then. Um, just too heavy on the drink, too heavy on the drugs. Um, and yeah, I, I, it was in my head. I decided that that was something that I wanted to do. I signed up for one and pretty much within a year of starting running, I had completed my first Ironman. And within two years, I'd done the 32 Ironmans in 32 days. It's like a whirlwind of a story, isn't it? Because, you know, from that kind of the situation that you're in London, where, like you say, you're, you're going out, you're drinking, you're partying, you're doing all that sort of stuff. And then COVID hits, you go back to Ireland and you kind of get 
immersed in this I would imagine it felt a little bit like you know you're back home obviously it's a beautiful place there's the sea availability there to go see swimming it must have always felt like two different worlds like coming from there heading back there and kind of moving forward with your life in a strange way yeah a hundred percent i i think i really took for granted how much or how great a place it was that i grew up in i think i resented for a long period of time where i grew up because you know yes we're 20 30 minutes drive away from the nearest kind of town village whatever you want to call it um but when you're growing up as a teenager that's ours because the bus stop from my house was like a 40 minute walk like up up a mountain pretty much so um i kind of resented it but when i came back after living in london for about a year year and a bit uh, and out of that environment with the drink and the drugs um it definitely gave me so much space to just be like this is nice like i could this is really settling for me i felt comfortable i felt comfortable in what i was doing um uh, and the steps i was taking towards i suppose maybe improving my overall fitness whether that be mental and, and physical fitness i think so yeah it was a completely different worlds i actually really relate to that i'm from i'm from south wales originally kind of mid south wales the brecon beacons and um you know when i go back now and i see the mountains and you you drive in you see penavan in front of you and we were always like an hour away from cardiff so it was like oh it takes ages to get to the city or it takes ages to do this it takes ages to do that now when you go home and you're there you're like why didn't i appreciate this more when i was a kid like why didn't i go and run on the trails in the mountains or why didn't i go and swim in the tarns around the kind of the mountain ranges and that's a weird thing as you grow older i think you come to kind of appreciate that a lot more don't you like my end goal is to move back to ireland i grew up on a farm that farm is not being used as a farm at the moment and my end goal is to turn that into a kind of a wellness retreat with a sustainable coffee shop and a gym and co-working space for people from the local community and um, where they have to create a course and then they have to deliver that course to people from disadvantaged areas so if you're a chef working in the kitchen you teach people how to cook if you're gym instructor in the gym you teach people how to use the gym if you're renting a space and you're a video editor you teach people how to video edit or take pictures and different things like that and that's like my end goal of what i want to get to and having just left london and, and i'm obviously living in lisbon now for me that sort of living in somewhere like london um just isn't for me it just it doesn't fill my cup I've tried it. I've tried it where I was completely sober I, and I didn't drink at all. And it was great at the weekends and run club and all that sort of stuff is amazing, but it still didn't fill my cup. And it was crap when I was drinking and using drugs the whole time. Um, so I know it's not for me. And Lisbon is that kind of like happy in between because I live by the coasts. I'm right by the sea. I um, have the whole promenade to run. I've got a massive, huge, big park beside me that I can run on the trails. Um, and the weather's pretty good. So, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a journey of trying to figure out what fills my cup and what doesn't fill my cup. But I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, Liz uh, London has a lot to offer. Um, and I, I left London this time around with a lot of lifelong friends, which I'm pretty proud of it. So. It was actually something I was going to come on to, but I feel like it's probably a good point to mention it. And I think you've kind of half already answered it, but, you know, moving out to Lisbon and you obviously went back to London after uh, being in Ireland for a bit through COVID and doing the challenge and stuff, going back to, to London, then building like this community and having, you know, that massive group of friends and going to all these run clubs. I was going to ask, was it difficult to leave and relocate? But I feel like, maybe it wasn't as difficult as maybe I was kind of thinking it might have been. Um, for a long period of time, I would say that I was very closed off to making new friends. Uh, I, I was pretty happy with the friends that I had. They're great guys and great friends have supported me through thick and thin. Um, but I would say that I was very closed off to meeting new people. And I think that was because I relied on drink as a crutch to be able to 
converse with people and the anxiety that I had going into social situations was quite crippling. But through exercise, I found that when I run or when I'm on a bike or before or after a swim, well, more so after a swim, after I had that exercise and that dopamine, it's kind of like the high that you would get from having a drink. So my ability to converse with people and have a conversation um, became a lot easier for me anyway. And also, you're going to a, a, an event or a thing on the weekend where you're meeting people who are doing the same thing that you're doing. So you've already got something in common with those people. So to be able to make connection with them is, is so much easier. So actually moving to Lisbon this time around has, it's obviously hard. It's, it's tough to leave a, a really good group of friends behind the new friends that I've met and the friends that I've had since I was eight years old that I grew up and went to school with. They all live in London uh, and I've left them all behind. But it's also been quite liberating in the sense that I've just set up my own run club here in Lisbon. I've been going to other run clubs here. I'm here six weeks and I've probably done as much with regards to building a community as I did in the first year of living in London the last time around because I was so nervous about doing it still. So I think if anything, London really set me up for success over here, which is great, I suppose. Talk to me about the the kind of beginnings of the challenge then. You you mentioned, you know, you said that you wanted to do an Ironman uh, when you were a bit younger. Your mates kind of laughed at you. They were like, that ain't going to happen. And then you went and brewed the roll on that. And then like, this is significant though. To go back to back 70.3s for as many a days as you did. Talk to me about the kind of the culmination of that idea, I guess, to start with. And then actually getting to the start of that first one. Yeah, so... As every good idea, it came after a cup of coffee uh, and a, you know, 3K sea swim. Um, <laughs> a pal of mine... As the famous saying goes. As the famous saying goes, yeah. <laughs> um, no, a pal of mine, Alan, um, back home in Ireland, we used to swim, you know, three, four mornings a week in Kalani Beach um, and have a coffee afterwards. And he was saying, wouldn't it be cool if you could do you know, a 70.3 in every county of Ireland. There's 32 counties in Ireland. Uh, and I was like, don't be don't be nuts. Like, how would anybody do that? It'd take them years, yada, yada, yada. Um, and shot it down in my cynicism. Uh, and it just, it just bored a hole in my head. It just, I had a grow for something that, something new, something different. Um, I'd only just finished my first Ironman. And I kind of said, this is it. I think this is the thing that I'm going to do. Um, and I, I'm going to do it for mental health. And th this is it. So I kind of said it to a few people and I said it to my coach at the time and he said, look, let's give it a go. He was like, when are you planning on doing it? it September time. And I said, September, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start on the 28th of August next year. We've got a whole year to do this, right? He goes, yeah, cool. But let's do it. He was like, we'll do an Ironman, a full Ironman, about four or five weeks out. It's not going to go well for you because you're going to be so overtrained. But after that event, we'll taper down. We'll get you to the start line. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So training from September to January was going good. Um, but I was finding it quite difficult to manage everything with my job and training. So about two days before I was meant to go back to work in January, I just had a complete connection. I was like, I don't want to be doing this job in sales. Um this is just not working for me. So I pretty much messaged and texted every single person that I worked for previously in any coffee shops, restaurants, any of that stuff beforehand um, to see if I could get a really early shift in a coffee shop and then a late shift in the evening working in a restaurant or, or delivering or doing something like that. And I did within kind of within 24 hours, I had a coffee morning, a coffee shop job in the morning and I was delivering um, Indian food in the afternoon in my car. And that gave me the middle of the day to train as much as I needed to. And it was perfect. So I did that pretty much the whole way up until the challenge. Um, and yeah, the, the challenge started. The first eight days were horrific. Uh, but then it got increasingly better as time went on. And it was probably the best month of my life. 
in that time kind of leading up where you were you know working those two jobs training in in the day there must have been times where you were thinking what have I what have I let myself in for here like I'm setting myself up for for failure or were you like super confident throughout that time um my biggest strength and my biggest weakness is the fact that I reckon I can do anything <laughs> without having any uh, any that. information to back it up, right? I'm pretty confident that I can throw my hand at most things sporting wise. Um if I give if I was given X amount of time to practice, right? Um and my other probably biggest strength is my mentality uh around pain. I love pain it's why i do the things that i do i find it exhilarating and i get quite a lot of comfort out of being able to push my body to the absolute extremes that's really weird to say and not everybody has that and that's fine but i really get comfort out of it. like when i i'm having a really bad day i don't go out for a light jog i go out and i run as hard as i can for as long as i can until i probably get sick and then I'm all right. I'll jog home, like, or I'll do hill sprint sprints on repeat or something. Like, I'm not well in the head. I'm fully aware of that. The day before the challenge, just to come back to your kind of question, I actually was quite sick. I was like, had like a sinus infection, and I was just freaking myself. I was like, oh, this is going to be horrendous. I'm going to have a sinus infection. It's not going to go well. But it was fine. Got over it. Yeah. The, biggest challenge was my <laughs> knee that blew up and um the blisters on my feet and oh and coming off my bike at like 60 50 kilometers an hour right we'll get on to all of that in a second um the ability to suffer i think it's just so underrated like when it comes to endurance sport i think that is a real thing like somebody's ability to just be in it and sometimes it's it's sometimes it's difficult to well, it's always difficult to be in that suffering. But like, where do where do you go when you are, you know, when you are in a in that place of pain, in that place of suffering? What are you telling yourself in those moments? Um, it usually comes back to the idea, for me anyway, that I this is nothing compared to the stuff that I've had to deal with mentally throughout my life. Like this is this pain that I'm feeling is completely temporary in this moment i think where people people who kind of people who do endurance challenges and don't finish it's usually because they think that the pain that they're feeling right now is going to continue for the rest of their life um or for the rest of the time or whatever it is that however long they have to go but in actual fact more than likely in a couple of K or 3K or 10K, it's probably going to dissipate and be all right. But for me anyway, it's like I was in the worst place in my whole life when I was 18, 19 years old. Like I didn't want to be here. There was a period of time where I would go to sleep not wanting to get up. And this went up for months and months and months and months. I spent months in hospital. Um, so... I just look at that and, and say there was a period of time where you're, you didn't want to be here. Look at you now and you get to do this. You know, I couldn't, I, there's, there's, a, there's a more of a chance based on the period of time that I was in hospital. I'm lucky to be here. So I might as well make the most of it. How do you look back at that young man now who was going through all of that? Um, sadness. Yeah, sadness. I just think um, lost and yeah, it's just sad, isn't it? Really sad. But but I guess the fact that you're you're where you are today that must that must bring you some source of almost pride as well that you're from where you were to to where you are now. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, yeah, um, sometimes. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything that happened or that happened to me for anything because it's made me the person who I am today. But is there periods of time where I look back and go, I wish I didn't behave that way towards other people or treat myself with so little regard? Yes, 
Um, and that can be quite hard. Um, but yeah. Looking back, sometimes when you've been through parts of your life that have been insanely difficult is very difficult, isn't it? To just like look back and reflect on it can be the hardest thing because you you relate to that person because you are that person. But at the same time, like you feel so disconnected from that person because you're not that person anymore. So it's like a really, it's a really weird thing to like try and comprehend, I think sometimes, yeah, and grasp. Because you just, you just like, well, even though I'm still the same bloke and the same body with the same mind, it almost feels like I'm two different people, I guess. Yeah, I think that's happened a few times over the last five, six years. I think me, I, I think I get to a point where I'm like, I'm really authentically myself and then it just goes to a whole new level and I find it completely more me, I suppose, yeah, yeah. more me of what, what I want to be and, and how I want to behave, so... Yeah. In the challenge, you already mentioned a crash, a knee, some blisters. Difficult moments. There were obviously many, but um I guess hit me with the hit me with the ones that really do stand out when you're thinking about it. I think the first the first like six, eight days were, yeah. were awful. Like I had blisters up and down my feet and my knee just kinda locked. Um so it just kind of behind my knee kind of like blew up and it was swelled and it just felt like it just was so like rigid and stiff and then it just kind of dissipated um i don't know whether it was the normatec boots that i was wearing for hours afterwards every day or what it was but um it dissipated but i'd say the biggest what could have been a setback was when i came off the bike um yeah, I was traveling probably like 40, 50, I, I, I was going, fa- we were going fast. We were in a, a train of, of bikes and um, something yeah. happened and I looked behind me and clipped the curb and just couldn't get my feet out, obviously traveling so quickly. Took all the skin off my hands, uh, all the skin off my, my hip, my knee, um, my elbow, and... Uh, had to like struggle to get it like smash my head off the ground struggle to get the bike back home taped up my hands and then you know had to go run a half marathon uh, in the blistering heat and then get up the next day and do it all again for another 10 days and um yeah it was that was probably the, the biggest setback that could have i think for most people hitting the ground that hard and that being the case and knowing that you have to swim every single day for the next 10 days and your whole hands are going to be in agony as you try to pull the water they probably just go fuck that can't be arsed yeah. but um, I went out the next day and did the quickest swim that I did the whole time so fuck it <laughs> I feel like that sums you up very well mate I, th- I do also think I should have probably said um if you're not sure what an Ironman 70.3 is, if you're listening to this, it's a 1.2 mile swim, 52 mile bike, and then a half marathon, 13.1. Um, and to do 32 of them back to back is absolutely insane. Uh, we've talked about kind of those difficult times. Highlights wise, obviously that finish line is going to be a highlight in some ways, but also other ways I would imagine a bit like, ah, oh, done now, we kind of keep going. Like, what's the next thing? We'll talk about that, but what were those moments during the challenge, traveling around Ireland, that that felt real special to you? Every single day, where I got to get up and do something that I loved doing, it was me, my girlfriend Emily, who has been christened Saint Emily by my nana, <laughs> um, my Ellie, my Ford Fiesta 04, cost me seven hundred quid, less than the bike on the back of the car. Less go. Less than the back wheel on the back of the car, to be completely honest. Um, and yeah, it was just the, the two of us, a car filled with uh, rice pudding and squares bars and cereal and shite driving around. And it was incredible. It was unreal. It was just insane. And getting to cycle some of the coastline and around some of the, the places and lakes and, and mountains and all that sort of stuff around Ireland was just insane. It was class. How do you look back at it now? Obviously great fondness, but what what are the what are the 
were the main feelings. Um, I envious a, a little bit. Like I wish I was, I could, I could go again. I do plan on doing it again, but doing fulls, like full Ironmans. I don't think that would be half as enjoyable, but um, because it would just be a world of pain. But yeah, um, yeah I, I, I just look back at it with so much fond memories. Like me and Ems were only going out about two months, like talk about baptism of fire, you know, honeymoon like period 101. Honeymoon, honeymoon <laughs> period 101. Like it was pretty much like if we last this, we're good. Um, and apart from one bust up, that was it. We were sweet. Yeah. What what lessons did did you take from it? And I'm sure there are plenty that you apply to everyday life now. Is there ever points in your life that you're like, right, you know, I learned this from here, and this has helped me get through this part? Or was that more of a just like, you know, you've learned the lessons before that, and that's where you've applied them. I think it was probably a, a bit more of the latter. I've learned the lessons beforehand and that's when I, when I applied them. But also I had a, a few mantras. So like one was go one more and the other one yeah. was this two shall pass. And I just, anytime shit got really, really tough, um, it's, I just would say that to myself and something good would happen. You know, for example, I, I was in Waterford one day and I had the worst day ever had a bloody puncture, had to walk from like kilometers because I didn't bring, I, I think I ran out of puncture kits. So I had to get all the way back to another town um, get a new tube put in, whatever. Got back to the car, drove to where there was like a, a really continuous run route. And I put out the sign that I had. I had a massive big pink sign saying what I was doing. And I started running and it was just awful. I had to like call into a house and get a, a glass of water. I was run, walking, predominantly walking. And this guy ran past me, said hello, whatever. I was chatting away to him. Uh, and then he, on the way back, he goes, are you the guy that's doing the thing with the sign? I was like, yeah. He was like, started walking with me. And he was like, well, start doing a bit of jogging. And I'd say that was, he caught, probably caught me around halfway. So there was another 11, 11K to go and together i don't think i stopped running we just had a really good conversation about life and about what i was doing and about what he had gone through and he gave me some really good advice and 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 things um like one of the one of the bits of advice that he gave me was that his password on his laptop every day is something um something that brings him happiness it's about something that gives him joy so every time he logs into his computer he has to tie that in and it's always stuck with me um, and just those little nuggets of moments where shit was really bad and then just something happens and it just transforms the whole day um, was incredible. It's those moments you don't expect either, is it? When you're deep in something, you're like, you almost think before you're doing it, oh, I'll draw back on this or I'll look forward to that. But actually it's those things that you don't realise that piece of food that somebody hands you or the the little story somebody tells you or that one bit of nugget of information that you hold on from a bloke that you've never met before. They're the things that, that make challenges like that so special. Which is, uh, yeah, incredible. Let's talk about the end because, um, like I said, I would imagine it felt kind of amazing because you finished, but also like, oh, I finished. Where was your head at? Um... I was really prepared for this because when I did my first Ironman, I had a complete and utter breakdown afterwards in the sense of I just stayed in my room with the curtains drawn for like days, not feeling good, feeling really, really shit about everything because I had put so much into it that I expected to have this epiphany while doing this Ironman and it didn't happen. It just, it was grand. Like, it wasn't wildly difficult. It wasn't wildly easy. I got to the finish line. I felt good about it. That was it. It wasn't anything special out of the day of doing the Ironman. I didn't find. So I was really prepared for that. Um, that afterwards, I was going to feel this elation, but it was probably going to dissipate, and um, I was going to have to look back on it and, and find the really good pieces 
from it to remember it by. And that's what I did. I went on holidays. I took a 10 day holiday and I um, reminisced over it and enjoyed myself and had a couple of drinks and ate some nice foods and just relaxed. And then I started training for a marathon. That was four weeks later. Go one more, I guess. Go one more. Like you say, like just move forward and talking moving forward. Where where are we where are we going from now? Because it's been like a big change in your life, like we've already mentioned, coming from London to Lisbon, setting up the run club, looking forward to the future. But in the immediate future, what what happens? Where are you going? What's the next thing for you? Uh challenge wise, is this? Well, what whatever you however you want to interpret the question, mate. Yeah. Um so challenge wise, um, I am gunning for a massive challenge that will take place take take place in London about a year from now, which will be attempting to run six thousand kilometers in hopefully sixty days. If it doesn't happen in sixty days, I'll be running six thousand kilometers either way. Um why six thousand kilometers? There is six thousand people on average who commit suicide in the UK and uh, I wanna run a kilometer for each and every one of those people. Um so that's my big challenge between now and then I have some kind of smaller things that I'll be doing so I'm doing why we run in September which is a five day 250k ultra currently training for that not going great but we'll get there um and then overall life um I am trying to create a business which is called such good value where I intend to provide such good value to people who are trying to improve their overall um, mental and physical fitness um, and have a better relationship with themselves and the people around them, um, a better relationship with exercise and food, um, and yeah, maybe a better relationship with uh, work uh, and life balance and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I'm in the process of trying to create that business and create that brand, um, which will hopefully make the world a slightly better place and improve people's overall well-being. I think that's probably a whole other podcast to delve into that, but you know, I feel like it would be a nice way to end, just to kind of look back to where you've come from, mate. Like you, you obviously went through a very, very difficult time, and there will be people listening to this now that maybe going through something similar. Um, and can't see a way out and you know that that at the moment is is what they're in um striving for better physical and mental health is something that you advocate like very very well what would you say to these people that are thinking you know there's nowhere to go here like what do i do you are you are capable of doing extraordinary things whether you believe it or you don't um Four years ago, I never thought that I could run 10K. And I'm, I'm bringing this down to just running right now. But this goes for any aspect, whether it's an exam or a job or whatever it is that you are looking to achieve. Four years ago for me, the thought of being setting up my own business was non-existent. I had no confidence to do that. The thought of being able to run 10K, never mind uh, uh, a Ironman or a marathon was non-existent. You are capable of doing extraordinary things. The statement that is true is you either believe you can or believe you can't. Both of those statements are true and you're better off being optimistic and believing that you can and falling on your face and getting back up again and trying it in a completely different way until you find what works for you because you'll find it. You just gotta keep persisting with us.